Hello, friends. This is Bob Ilson aboard the 20th Century Limited, one of the world's great trains, where we have a host of travelers today and some very interesting people. I'm going to ask Dr. Anatole Rappaport to be our guest. He is a well-known pianist and is research associate in mathematical biophysics at the University of Chicago. Dr. Rappaport, I believe that uh, for some years uh, you spent a great deal of time, didn't you, touring and as a pianist? Uh, yes. Uh, in the years before the war, I was a concert pianist, and I toured Europe, Mexico, and this country extensively. What about your musical education, Doctor? It was mostly in Vienna, Austria, that I got my musical education at the State Academy uh, from 1929 to 1934 is when I studied there. What about your interest in uh, general semantics? I became interested in semantics while I was in service. I was in Alaska at that time, and uh, I read uh, Science and Sanity, Language and Action, and other literature pertaining to general semantics. I became very deeply in the subject and began to contribute to the Journal of General Semantics, etc. From then on, I was an active participant in all the activities. Uh, doctor, are general semantics being taught in the schools today? As I understand it, about seven universities in the country offer general semantics as such. But besides that, it is taught in connection with other subjects, such as philosophy, psychology, education, speech, and English. Uh, Dr. Rappaport, would you define the general semantics for us as associated with the average person? It is very difficult to define general semantics because semanticists view definitions with a great deal of apprehension. However, one might say that general semantics is a study of evaluation. It is primarily a study of how human nervous systems react to symbolic processes and symbolic systems. Language, of course, is one of the most important of such systems. But other systems also exist, which are symbolic in nature. Music is one of them, and mathematics another. Uh, what about the average person today? In other words, in, in semantics or the evaluation or something, uh, if you take ten average people, they would all evaluate some particular one thing differently, wouldn't they? That's right. That's one of the basic ideas in semantics. The fact that the same, seemingly the same things, are evaluated differently by different people. Uh, is there any relationship between music and semantics? Well, there is an approach of general semantics to art in general. Art is largely an abstracting process, and music is an abstracting process par excellence. The general semanticist analyzes these abstracting processes in music and can, can apply his dis discipline to that art with a great deal of success, I think. By the way, your interest in music, do you still have it? Yes, I still play concerts. In fact, my lecture connected with this series is a lecture recital with illustrations of the piano. Yeah, are you lecturing in all parts of the country now? Uh, no, I'm uh, at present employed in the University of Chicago. This is simply, this lecture is uh, in connection with the general semantics series. I see. Well, Doctor, it's been very nice having you as our guest on the century today, and I hope you'll try a shave with our product. It's Crank Shave Cream with Diaxin, the blue package for the lather and the green for the brushless, and thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you very much. And that was a very well-known pianist and a gentleman associated with the University of Chicago in the Mathematical Biophysics Department, Dr. Anatole Rappaport. I'm going to ask Mr. Thomas W. Bresmahan to be our guest. He is associated with one of our lead magazines, McCall's, and is interested uh, primarily in home furnishing and in home building. Mr. Bresmahan, you were talking about home building being slow. Why is that? Because of the very high prices? Because, yes, primarily, but the high prices are caused by a multitude of complex reasons. Uh, the fact that uh, it is, home building is conducted by old-fashioned handcraft method of manufacture as opposed to our streamlined assembly line methods of other manufactured products in this country. And uh, it's a slow procedure. The Every man and woman who wants to build a house wants some specific house designed for their own needs and purposes, not like an automobile, which uh -huh. is mass production. Well, that's certainly very true. Yeah. What about the trend in uh, home furnishings and in furniture? Are, are people, uh, are, the, uh, are there many people today who are modern-minded? They are indeed. They are indeed. The trend toward modern, particularly in furniture, is uh, very pronounced. You can see that, that the home furnishings markets in New York, Chicago, High Point, North Carolina, that the the modern furniture was at least 60 to 65 percent of all the items shown. And the public has accepted it. 
the new public that's come after the war, the young people starting out to build homes, all ask for modern furnishings. I've noticed some of the colors in some of the beautiful rooms uh, in your magazine. Uh, what, what is the predominating color? I noticed, for instance, last year that there were a lot of dark greens, greens and whites. Yes, green is coming very, very strong, coming fast this year. But the, uh, the bright colors, the strong colors are going to be uh, popular now. The mills have learned how to work with them. Pastel shades are good. Uh, alive colors, colors that are alive and and bright. What about the uh, what about the use of glass in uh, home building, uh, Mr. Bresmahan? We've seen, for instance, some in some of the magazines, some glass houses. You're going to see you're going to see a great deal more use of glass. Uh, glass uh, for insulation purposes. I mean by that. Insulated glass, double uh -huh. thickness with an insulation uh, of air between, uh, thermally sealed. Thermopane is a, an example of it. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, it's only uh, the lack of ability to produce it in quantity sufficient for the market is the only thing that's holding it back. But uh -huh. you'll see plenty of it on the market this year. You suppose we're ever going to see the day, maybe in the not too distant future, say when big apartments and uh, uh, homes will all uh, basically have built in them uh, air cooling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That will come first in the sections where the demand for it is greater, southwest and south, of course. But, uh, no, you can see more and more of it all the time. It's right upon us today. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Bresmahan, it's been awfully nice having this chat with you, and I hope you'll try a shave with our product. Here's a green package of Crank's brushless shave cream containing the amazing discovery, Diaxin, and once you use it, I'm sure you'll never want to shave with anything else. Thank you, Bob. I'll Bye. try it tomorrow morning. Bye. Thank you very much for being our guest. And that was Mr. Thomas W. Bresmahan of McCall's Magazine. Attention, friends. Crank's sensational bargain offer is closing in just a few more days. And if you take my advice, you won't wait another day to act because it's truly an amazing opportunity to get the nationally famous Style King men's belt with a beautiful, genuine, dirty old, non-tarnishable buckle that gleams like gold. It's a real beauty. It has a patented giant grip. It comes in sizes from 22 to 62 inches, with any initial you desire handsomely raised on the buckle. You'd expect to pay at least $3 for a belt like this and consider it a wonderful buy. But if you act now, before the offer closes at midnight March the 14th, and mail in a Crank Shave Cream box top and only 50 cents to Crank's, Box 831, Chicago, your belt will be sent to you right away and postpaid. Remember, whether you prefer a brushless shave or a rich brush and lather shave, you can now enjoy the benefits of whisker-wielding Diaxin and Crank Shave Cream. Within seconds, Diaxin absorbs the water-resisting film on your whiskers, lets the water soak right into the hairs for quick, easy, and comfortable shaving. Your face feels as smooth as silk, marvelously sleek and refreshed. So hurry, men, and buy a jar or tube of either Crank's brushless shave cream in the green package or Crank's new rich lather brush shave cream in the blue package. Be sure to tell us the initial and belt size you want. But don't wait, don't hesitate because this offer positively closes midnight March the 14th and will not be repeated. So get busy. Send a Cranks box top and 50 cents for each belt you order and mail to Cranks. That's K-R-A-N-K-S, Box 831, Chicago. Do it now. Only a few days left. We have one of the outstanding personalities on the American stage. He's our guest on the century today, Miss Gertrude Lawrence. I've been wanting for a long time to tell her how much I enjoyed her work in Pygmalion. So, Miss Lawrence, I think this is the first <laughs> chance I've had. Thank you very much. I'm glad you liked it. I thought it was wonderful. Fine. Uh, how long did you play in Pygmalion? Oh, we, we started to do it. We were going to do it for eight weeks originally, but we ran two years. <laughs> it ran two years. Huh? I've always sort of regretted, even though I liked the lady who made the, uh, played the part in the motion picture, that you didn't make the movie. Well, Is I didn't. Wendy Hiller? Yes, Wendy Hiller and dear Leslie Howard, of course. Yes, and Leslie Howard. It was wonderful. Right. And you were in Chicago in a play, Lady in the Dark? Yes, remember? <laughs> yes, I do indeed. One of the things I remembered about it was the fact that the Civic uh, Opera Theater, I believe, had just opened shortly, and it was the first chance that they had a play where they could really do something with the stage. You remember? Yeah, well, we did cover them. quite a lot of ground up over there. Yes. What was it they did in that uh, that was unusual? Was it some way that they shifted around we to show... We had four revolving stages. Uh-huh. And they all revolved in different directions. So if you missed one, you were like the old lady catching the last bus. You know, you got one foot on one revolve and one foot on the other. It was just too bad. Uh, <laughs> In the beginning, you were in Private Lives with Noel Card. Uh, yes, that. I was with Mr. Card in Private Lives, but I came here in 1924 with Charlotte's Review, originally. Uh huh. 1924. What was and that? Now I'm doing Tonight at 8:30, which is another one of Noel Card's 
plays that we did together in 1938, and now we're doing it again in 1948. Yes. Miss Lawrence, you're originally from England, aren't you? That's right. Huh? Can't you tell? Yes, indeed, indeed, you, you certainly can with that accent of yours. And you got started in your dramatic work over there? Oh, yes, when I was about ten years old. Uh-huh. What about the motion pictures? Have you done anything? I've, done, I've made about eight different uh, motion pictures in England, though, with Corda and various people. I've never made any in Hollywood. I imagine that you have been looking uh, with interest at the advancements they've been making in motion pictures in England. I think in the last two years, they've made tremendous strides. Well, that, that I think they have, too, but I think they've made particularly a good stride during the war when they could turn out Henry V and pictures like that during the, the bombing and the blitz and things like that. I think that's very much their credit. Yes, indeed. Are you looking forward to Laurence Olivier's Hamlet? Very, very much indeed. They and we're it. also bringing over Michael Redgrave's Macbeth. Oh. Very soon. We had, uh, you perhaps will recall his name, we had Mr. Rank's partner on the century just about uh, two weeks ago, a man who's made many of the big motion pictures in England. I don't know what his name would be. Uh, it just doesn't strike me, but I, men- I remember that he mentioned your name and mm-hmm. the fact that he had wanted to have you do something for them over there, but he came after you'd come over to this country. Oh, I see. Yes, Mr. Rank wasn't operating when I was working with Mr. Corder. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think he'd started then. Uh, My last picture was um, Rembrandt with Douglas Fairbanks and um, uh, Charles Lawton. Yes, I recall that, too. I am a really rabid movie fan. <laughs> I see everything. I do, too. I love them. Well, Miss Lawrence, it's been awfully nice having you as our guest on the century today, and I wish you continued success in your oh, career. Oh, let me go, because I've got Marlene Dietrich's <laughs> Kleenex under my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being our guest. And for the man in your life, here is a tube of our product. It's Crank Shave Cream with Diaxin. The blue package for the lather and the green for the brushless. And again, thank you so much for being our guest. And that was one of the outstanding figures on the American stage, Miss Gertrude Lawrence, who is currently appearing in Noel Cards tonight at 8.30. Friends, before it's too late, be sure to send for several of those handsome belts we're offering. Remember, the buckle is genuine, non-tarnishable deary old with any initial you want. This offer positively ends midnight, March the 14th, and will not be made again, so hurry. Just get a jar or tube of either Crank's new rich lather shave cream or Crank's brushless shave cream, both containing whisker-wilting Diex. Mail the box top with your name and address, belt size and initial, with only 50 cents to Crank's, that's K-R-A-N-K-S, Box 831, Chicago, Illinois, and your belt will be mailed postpaid. Do it now, only a few days left, and you'll say thanks to Crank's for a perfect shave. And now the century's all set to pull out for New York, and this is Bob Elson saying goodbye for today from the world-famous